What's up guys, welcome back to the channel, hope you're all doing well. In this video, I'm going to be checking out the Noctis 450 from NZXT. But unlike most other case reviews that I do, today I'm also going to be doing a full Skylake system build in this case. That's right, you're basically getting two videos, but you only have to tolerate me for half the time. Everyone wins. So in just a bit, I'll be showing off the full time lapse of the assembly while commentating on my build experience in this case along the way. Of course, since most of the build will take place inside of the chassis, let's quickly take a look at the Noctis's unique exterior design. So a few months back after this case released in the US, the internet wasted no time in bequeathing it the pseudoname The Dark Knight Case, an alias I find befitting, as the stealthy matte black finish and wicked sharp edges make the case look like something you'd find when snooping around the Batcave. There's also a red glowing NZXT logo on the power supply shroud and some matching underglow lighting which make the case look pretty badass in low light. Perhaps even more badass though would have been the inclusion of RGB LED functionality for a far broader range of system customization. Instead, your only other color option here for the Noctis is the white model that features blue accent lighting, which might seem a bit limiting. Now, while this case uses the same slim frame as the hugely successful NZXT H440, the massive bulge of the 450's top and front panels make it much bulkier in comparison, so small desk owners beware. Fortunately, both panels support a fully open ventilation design, though it would appear otherwise. While their purpose is purely cosmetic, all the plastic paneling is actually raised a few centimeters above the underlying mesh to ensure fresh airflow all around. Popping off the front panel, we see the omission of a 5.25 inch bay in place of a magnetic dust filter that hides three included 120mm fans with optional mounting points for two 140s. I was also pleased to see ample space under the front panel for push-pull setups when water cooling. On top, you'll find a pair of USB 2 and USB 3 ports, mic and headphone jacks, and power button with red LED. Under the hood is the same configuration we saw at the front, with mounting points for three 120s or two 140s. It should be noted here, though, that only the two rear fans can fit directly underneath the top panel, meaning you'd only be able to install five of the six fans when mounting a 360 radiator in push-pull. Rounding out the last of the pre-installed fans, you get a 140mm at the back of the case with vertical mounting strips for additional radiator clearance. You can also swap out the fan for a 120mm option if you're so inclined. Since fishing around the back of your case in the dark is no fun, there's a small button that turns on two blue LEDs to illuminate your rear I.O. The same button can also be used to toggle the NZXT and underglow LEDs on and off. Additional mentions include seven expansion slots, two grommets for water cooling tubes, and a removable PSU bracket that mounts directly to your power supply for smooth rear installation. There's also a removable dust filter that slides out from the bottom for quick and easy cleaning. By the way, good on NZXT for choosing capacitive thumb screws, not only for this bracket, but for the side panels as well. The large trapezoidal window does a nice job at showing off your main components, though I generally prefer rectangle over red solo cup. And that right there pretty much sums it up for the exterior of this case. So moving right along, let's toss it over to Vlog Kyle, who will give us an inside look at building a high-end Skylake gaming rig in the Noctis 450. Hey, hey, thanks, Script Kyle. How's it going, everyone? This is Vlog Kyle here. Uh, as Script Kyle mentioned, I am going to be doing a narrative of this whole build process from start to finish as we watch Build Kyle uh, go ahead and assemble this Skylake system. For those of you who are wondering, he's using a Core i7-6700K with a gaming G1 motherboard from uh, Gigabyte that's on the Z170 chipset, along with a, a quad, I'm sorry, a dual channel kit of DDR4 memory from Corsair. It's uh, their Vengeance line of low profile memory. But uh, while he goes ahead and preps this board and the CPU cooler, I'm going to go ahead and just get right into it uh, with the Noctis 450. Uh, I was pretty impressed by the interior uh, as far as build quality goes. The paint job was incredible. It's got a really smooth matte black finish that kind of matches the stealth vibe of the outside of the case. And I thought that was really a, a kind of a top-notch uh, attention to detail type feature that uh, really gives a, the case a premium look and feel both inside and out. The motherboard went in no problem. All the standoffs are pre-installed. There's a middle one that's a little bit taller so to uh, help you align the whole thing. While this case doesn't officially support EATX, uh, the board that you see here is, in fact, uh, extended ATX form factor, and it was able to go in no problem. Shut up, phone. Sorry about that. Um, but uh, it does cover up some of the grommets on the right side, so just be prepared to have to route some of the larger cables, like your 24-pin ATX, around the actual motherboard tray, because you won't be able to fit them in uh, with that EATX board slightly covering them. The power supply went in no problem with that rear access uh, mounting bracket. 
the radiator as well went in no problem. Although there's a lot of space between the radiator and the, the left side panel. I felt like there could have been more mounting options to have the uh, radiator positioned further away from the motherboard to allow for thicker radiators or even taller heat spreaders on your RAM, for instance. Uh, I felt like that would have been cool. And I think now Build Kyle has gone on to routing the uh, front panel connectors. They actually go right through the power supply shroud uh, and then into the motherboard, of course. Uh, I do wish that they were grommeted, however. I felt like um, they are visible from the, the side panel window. I just think at 140 bucks for this case that uh, grommets would have been nice to see. At the back of the case, we get five removable drive trays, which uh, can support either 3.5 or 2.5 inch drives. They're made of pure steel. They are very high quality. They do not bend. They're super sturdy, and they've got two little uh, thumb screws to help you uh, remove and replace them quite easily. You can leave them out if you're not using them and open up a ton of airflow at the front for those three 120 millimeter fans. Uh, really great option there. Uh, you don't have to deal with any kind of drive cage. They're all just kind of independent drive trays, which I think simplifies things a lot adds for a bit more flexibility. I would have liked to see mounting holes on that hard drive wall, however, for like a, a water cooling reservoir, for example. Uh, I know Fantex does this, and I feel like at this price point, that would have been really nice to see. Um, so kind of a, a missed chance there. Moving on to the SSD installation, you do get two dedicated SSD mounts right on top of the power supply shroud. Uh, they are held in place with, uh, with a couple latches as well as a single thumb screw. This is a really nice place and a really great idea for uh, for storing your, your SSDs, especially now that uh, the designs of SSDs are getting a lot more fancy or more showy. Uh, people want to show them off, right? They're not ugly 3.5 inch drives, so uh, it's kind of a cool implementation there. All right, Build Kyle is now going for the video card. We've got a PCS Plus from PowerColor. It's an R9390X, and uh, it's a 10 and a half inch card. Fits nice and easy inside of the Noctis 450. Uh, this case actually supports pretty much as long as you want, as long as the uh, hard drive tray that's right in that area isn't blocking it. You will have to remove it, but uh, yeah, you can go probably the full, nearly the full span uh, length of the case with uh, however big of a video card you might need. Just be aware of the width as you might run into the uh, that hard drive wall right there. And finally, winding down with some cable management, there's just absolutely a ton of room in front of the power supply to store all of your cabling, um, as well as a little bit of space behind the motherboard tray. Uh, but like I said, most of it goes in front of your power supply, which is totally fine. Uh, there are a ton of tie-down points as well, although NZXT only threw in these really tiny, kind of dinky zip ties. I would have really liked to see Velcro straps uh, at this price point. Also, there's a, a strange three and a half inch or two and a half inch drive mount at the very bottom of the case in front of the power supply, and which I guess is neat uh, if you need it, but I honestly was kind of hoping for maybe a mount for a, a water cooling pump, for example. Thought that would have been really sweet, but uh, what can you do? Altogether, this is a pretty smooth and straightforward build. I actually liked it. I'm sure Build Kyle liked it as well, but uh, why don't we take it back over to Script Kyle and see how he liked it. So, overall, there's a lot of good things to say about the Noctis 450. The build quality and paint job is top-notch inside and out, it features a strong internal layout that makes building easy, and there's enough well-placed routing holes to achieve a clean end result, which I very much appreciate. The system stays decently quiet, and the fan options when combined with those removable drive trays make for some killer airflow. At the same time, I was expecting to see a few more premium features that would justify its $140 price tag. Simple things like pump and reservoir mounts, and even some nicer accessories I felt were missed opportunities this time around. While I think bringing over the H440's interior layout was a smart move, I also wish NZXT would have innovated a little more in this area, as I'm sure some folks will find that the Dark Knight aesthetic by itself might not warrant the $30 premium over the H440. When it comes down to it, perhaps the Noctis 450 is the case you deserve, but not the case you need right now. <laughs> I can't do it. At any rate, let me know what you guys think of this case in the comments, and don't forget to toss me a like on this video if you enjoyed it. Before you go, check the description below where you can buy an Awesome Sauce shirt or bookmark my Amazon affiliate link and use it when you buy stuff. It helps me a lot. As always, I'm Kyle with Awesome Sauce Network. Thank you guys for watching. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and I'll see y'all in the next video.